welcome back to Red Ted Art. Today we're going to be showing you how to make Pip. Pip is our lovely little mascot or Pip Squeak, um, and I think she is absolutely adorable. Now she's part of a sewing book with loads of fantastic patterns. If you want to find out um, more about this book, check down below and in the i cards and get yourself a copy in order to make her. So get hold of your um, pattern from that book. But now let's see how to assemble and sew her. So to make the brown bear or pip you will need mainly some brown felt and a nice pip colour, um, some sort of beigey felt for sort of the details, a little bit of pink for the, for the cheeks, a little bit of red for the bow, a little bit of black for the snout, uh, for the eyes and the snout. And then of course you'll need some stuffing, I'm using an old pillowcase and you'll need some threads. So I'm using a combination of black and white threads as, all, as well as some thicker embroidery thread for the detail. So the first thing you need to do, as per usual, is cut out all your parts. So we have a pattern and we have our parts. <laughs> it's quite a few. And then once we have all these parts cut out, you need to decide where all the bits fit on your bear. So because then you're gonna sew them on. Now you have a choice, you can either sew them on, like I'm going to do in this video, or you can glue them on. It works quite well with glue actually, um, but it's really a question of how secure you want all the details to be. And I think sewing them on is also a great way just to practice your sewing and you know doing a bit more basically. And it just looks really, really sweet. So, <laughs> there we go, look. Now we're going to sew on the light coloured ones first. I'm actually going to pin a couple of my items in place um, so that I make sure that I do actually sew them on super, super neatly. So yeah, let's get sewing with the white thread. I'll speed this bit up. Okay, normally I would knot the thread, but the thread, but because it's quite um, thin, it's just going to pull through the felt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knot it against itself once I've done the first stitch. Now the stitch I'm going to be using for the adding features is basically a very simple running stitch. So you come from underneath up and then you go down and make a nice small stitch so you don't see it too much. Don't pull it too tight either otherwise it's going to leave marks. But just keeping it very gentle and down. Now you can at each stage um, tie off the thread and then move on to the next piece you're going to be sewing on. But I'm going to show you how around the back you can just hop from one feature to the next. So I'm going to take my thread, it's still attached, and I'm going to hop over from the back to the tummy area. So. And then again, you can do a little stitch as you go around. This, like I mentioned, don't pull it too tight, you want this to be straight, is a running stitch. So quite a big stitch at the back with a small one showing at the front. And then if you're feeling a bit more confident, you can push it in and back out in one go. If you're finding that tricky, it's easier just to push in and then come back. Now I'm gonna finish off the rest, creating a little foot, and then we'll come back and do the next color. See, I've gone over, round and over, and here I've gone uh, down, across and up. And then to tie off when you've done your last stitch, all I'm doing is, if you can have a look, I'm pushing it underneath one of the other stitches to create a loop. And then as, it, as the loop comes through, push the needle to make a little knot. And I'm gonna do that twice, and that'll give it a little knot. And push it through. And then you can just trim it. So now it's time for the black thread and I'm going to do exactly the same, but this time I am arranging the eyes. The paws I'm going to do separately, so I'm going to do all the top bit in one go. So I'm going to sew like that up and then I'm going to do separately the paws, but it's the same process and I'm using the thread single again. So you can just see me starting off and then we'll jump forward to when I've sewed it all on.
So I just wanted to show you as I sew this because the mouth is a little bit delicate because it's quite a very thin piece of felt. So you might want to just add a little stitch to each side just to make sure that the mouth stays on secure. That's one side and then I'll come back on the other side. You could also just use a thread to do the mouth part and not actually cut the felt. And then we'll carry on. And now for the um, bow, I'm just going to do like a little square. So I'm going to go across. Not very straight. <laughs> it's okay though. Over. Come back. And then I'm going to, from the back, come over here. And then again, go back. It's like a bit of like a back stitch actually, this one. And then go over here. And again, come across. And then just that little detail of the sort of bow where it's sort of got that little fold. I'm just going to do a little line on each side. So I'm not actually sewing on the whole. This is loose, which is nice because that's kind of when you're sewing, you'll leave, when you're doing the outlines, you're going to leave that loose. And there you go, that's the bow. So I'm going to now tie off and then we're going to do the bottom but again with the tying off. Look at it, it looks at the back. I'm going to run my needle underneath some of the other stitches. I'm going to bring them back again till I've got a little loop and push my needle through. And then again, underneath, push my needle through. So I've done it twice and then trim. onto the, the arms. So all the first layers have been sewn. Can you see all the little stitches? So single layer, normal thread. Now it's time to add some fun details with black um, embroidery twine. Now what I love about this pattern is that you can make it as simply or as complicated as you like. So you can leave out stages that you don't fancy or um, you do them all. And basically I'm just gonna do kind of a little cute eyelash that's part of the design of this little bear. You, again, you can skip it or you can position the eyelashes in a different place. So I've just done one stitch here, bringing the thread from behind, bringing it over, and I'm gonna do another stitch here for the other eyelash. And it's just a cute little detail that I think really makes her look adorable. Let's see if you can see that. <laughs> the contrast isn't always so great. Now, uh, and then I'm gonna bring the thread down and I'm going to add some little features to the tummy. And then as well as that, we're gonna add claws. So literally, it's just, uh, if I can pull my needle through, <laughs> it's just these little features, claws, tummy, claws, claws, and then we're ready to bring together our two halves to make a pipsqueak softy. So your little Pip has got all her features, now it's time to bring it all together. Line it up with your other piece of felt, if it's got marks on like the um, from the pen, just make sure it's on the inside and then pin in place. Pinning really helps when you're sewing because when you're sewing things can sometimes move out of shape and then it's really irritating when you come all the way around and you find it's not sewn up properly. Um, I've now got the thin thread again, but this time I'm taking it double and I have put a knot in it. Double means it'll be stronger and you want this to be the strongest part so that the thing that, that the old teddy bear doesn't come apart. I'm going to take the two halves apart, push my needle in. This means my um, knot will be on the inside and you won't be able to see it. And then I'm going to do a very simple running stitch. So we've done the running stitch before. You're basically going in and out. So I'm coming up down, up, and so on. And we'll go all the way around. When I come to the bow, I'm gonna go underneath and round. And then when we get to about here, we'll stuff it, all right? So this is something that op often happens in sewing, your thread runs out. So you're gonna push it in, as if you're doing another um, stitch. And then you're gonna knot it off by pushing it under the thread and making a little knot. And doing it again. Making a little knot. Now you can trim this off and just tuck 
this inside. You don't want to cut it off too much and then carry on with a new piece of thread and a new knot. So time to stuff our little pipsqueak. This is pillow stuffing. So I've just used up an old pillow case that, uh, or pillow, not pillow case, but the inside of a pillow that we no longer needed and I've kept it for stuffing. I'm gonna make sure that goes a little bit in my foot and a little bit in this foot. And then fill, not too much, because you will lose a little bit of shape. It's the thing about 3D softies, you've got to remember that once they're stuffed, they become a bit narrower and longer, or they look narrower and longer. Tiny bit more maybe. And what I love about this pattern, my daughter suggested this, if you blow up the pattern, you could make it into a little pillow. So now I'm just going to gently push it in. So my daughter would like me to make this as a, as a pillow and I think that would look adorable. So I'm just doing a quick running stitch to finish it off and then I'll show you how to tie off your thread. I mean we've done it a couple of times already on this project but it's always helpful to see it again. So push it between the two then catch one of the, the stitches, push behind it and make a little knot. And then push it inside your sewing so that the thread's on the inside and give it a little trim without making a hole. And there you go. Pipsqueak Teddy Bear is finished. Isn't she adorable? Now, if you like Pip, <laughs> look what we've also got. We've got a Ted bag. So here we go, here's a little bag with its straps and you can put things inside and it's got a little pocket. So if you wanna know how to make this little Ted bag, just look down below or in the iCards. I think he's super fun. And of course you can use the Pip pattern and adapt it to make a Pip bag as well. So here is the book again. Um, it has lots of lovely patterns from 17 different designers and you will find Pipsqueak in it as well. So it's really cute, really easy makes. Um, why not take a look, check out the link below and grab yourself a copy. Bye.